Coming up on today's show, Tesla begins solar tile reservations, Volkswagen trash talks Tesla's EV market dominance, and a pivotal electric vehicle goes up in flames. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, May 12th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is TEN, the weekly news roundup show that searches out the most important stories of the week and serves them up just as you're starting your weekend. Last week, I brought you the news that the Chevrolet Bolt EV, after a quiet few months, was doing a little battle with its monthly sales totals, selling just over 1,000 cars during the month of April. But shortly after that show aired, I was contacted by several frustrated viewers from Norway who told me that the majority of customers in the country who'd signed up in September last year to buy an Opel Ampera E, the Bolt's European cousin, had just received notification that they will have to wait until next year before their car arrives. The excuse at this point seems to be a lack of allocation, but as I noted in a vlog midweek, GM has recently sold its Opel brand to Citroën Peugeot, a brand not known for having a very positive attitude towards electric cars. Add in the fact that GM no longer has a vested interest in the Opel brand doing well, and it's pretty clear that the Ampera E will be little more than a compliance car in Europe. It's a real shame and means that the EV crown in Europe is most likely going to remain with Renault, Nissan or Tesla. Talking of Tesla, a little controversy broke this week when it became apparent Tesla has been turning down the maximum charging power available to a small percentage of Tesla cars in order to ensure longer battery life and continued performance. The story broke last weekend when a customer, who uses Supercharger and Chidemo DC quick charging sessions far, far more than most Tesla owners, noticed his car was no longer charging at the theoretical maximum power output for a Tesla supercharger. He contacted the company, which confirmed that in order to protect the battery packs of cars which have used supercharger stations a lot, and I do mean a lot, then the maximum current is turned down a little, adding about five minutes to the overall charging time. The reason? To protect the car's battery pack. Again, I made a video about this during the week, so if you're interested, follow a link in the show notes to watch it at the end of this one. But honestly, it does feel a little bit like a storm in a teacup. On this show, I've covered everything from autonomous cars to electric airplanes, but I don't think I've ever covered a fully autonomous electric cargo ship. Until today, that is. That's because this week we heard about the Norwegian Forum for Autonomous Ships, a partnership between the Norwegian Maritime Authority and the Norwegian Coastal Administration. And next year, it will allow a fully autonomous electric cargo ship to transport cargo across the nation's various fjords. The idea? To dramatically reduce the carbon footprint of current transportation solutions, many, many cargo trucks, which have to travel hundreds of kilometers by land between major cities on opposite sides of the same fjord, reducing pollution, noise, and congestion in the process. Development on the concept ship in the video here, developed by maritime engineering firm Kongsbird and Yara International, is already underway. So here's to a successful launch next year. It was only last October that Tesla unveiled its all-new solar roof energy products, but already there's a lot of hype about the stealth integrated solar technology that Tesla wants to revolutionize the world with. And on Wednesday this week, Tesla opened the official order books for solar roofs made of its black smooth and textured tiles, placing customers on a wait list similar to the Tesla Model 3 in exchange for a cool 1,000 US dollar deposit. Tesla says it will begin installing the first solar roofs on customers' homes this summer and estimates after energy savings have been accounted for, customers will be paying around $22 per square foot of roof. As usual, US customers will get first dibs on the product, with other countries likely to follow next year. So if you want a solar roof made by Tesla, you should probably head to Tesla's special website to find out more, or watch the video I made on the subject this week. Here's one for you. Can you guess which political party someone supports by the type of car they drive? Well, according to one recent study, yes. 
As our buddies at Green Car Reports detailed this week, car site Car Jojo says that typically red states tend to shy away from electric and hybrid cars, while traditionally blue states are the opposite. Now, of course, there's a whole lot more going on than just political preferences, and I know plenty of people who are politically conservative who happily own a plug-in and hybrid vehicle, just like I know plenty of liberals who own hulking V8s. So while this is a nice headline-grabbing story, I suspect there's far more than this than the headline would suggest. And to help you figure that out, I've included a link in the show notes to the story in question. This next story will excite you if you're a fan of two wheels, specifically iconic motorcycle brand Harley-Davidson, which announced on Thursday that it intended to bring some form of electric motorcycle to market after all. Details are still a little sparse, but after its Livewire electric prototype was so well received by fans, the company says it's hard at work to make an electric motorcycle that looks and sounds just as different to other electric motorcycles as its gasoline motorcycles do to other motorbikes. Work is said to be progressing well, and a launch is expected sometime in the not-too-distant future, although exactly when, we don't know. This week, Tesla pushed another update to the Tesla Model S and Model X cars fitted with autopilot hardware, removing the previous speed restriction attached to auto steer and making it possible for auto steer to operate at speeds of up to and including 90 miles per hour. That's 145 kph. At the same time, Tesla confirmed that it was now saving video captured by the various in-car cameras used by autopilot system. Not to spy on customers, but rather to help it perfect its autonomous vehicle technology, something it hopes, I assume, will accelerate the speed at which it can develop full level 5 autonomy. It's not clear if Tesla is capturing data from all of the autopilot cameras on board, or just the two or three currently being used by its autopilot system at the moment. But there's one thing I can say. Its data costs must be sky high, and I can only imagine how much data is being generated on a daily basis. If you're feeling adventurous, why not try and figure it out and leave the answer in the comments below. Ever since Dieselgate broke back in late 2015, Volkswagen has been doing everything it possibly can to make itself appear to be as clean and green as an automaker as possible, showcasing prototype electric car after prototype electric car. Well, this week it went one step further, with several executives at its annual general shareholder meeting trash-talking competitors like Tesla and reiterating the claim that the Volkswagen Group would dominate the electric vehicle market by 2025. Of course, that's all very well and good, but so far we've seen very little evidence to suggest that's possible. And when you add in the news that Volkswagen announced it's decided not to publicly release the findings of its independent investigation into the circumstances that led to Dieselgate, because it might cause further criminal proceedings to be brought against the company and its employees, I'm really unconvinced that Volkswagen has a chance at making this claim become reality. Sorry. You might remember a few weeks ago, I told you that luxury brand Daimler was essentially ditching its focus on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in preference for battery electric vehicles. Well, now it appears that Mercedes-Benz CEO is working to correct what he says was a translation error, essentially a misunderstanding, between a German media site and a US news site. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles will play a role in the brand's future, he reiterated this week, but added, for now, they will be limited to fleet operators who have centralized hydrogen refueling capabilities. For now, it looks like electric vehicles will play a part, but it seems Mercedes is keen for everyone to know that it does still see a future in the fuel cell. When will that become a reality? Who can say? I certainly can't. Here's one for you. How much of a premium would you be willing to pay for a car with full autonomous capabilities? 1,000? 2? 10? Well, according to an article in the May edition of Transportation Research, American consumers are willing to pay between 3,500 US dollars premium over a standard vehicle for a car that's capable of partial autonomy and $4,900 extra for a car that has full autonomy. As the folks at Electrek reported this week, that's in line with the current pricing Tesla charges for turning on its advanced autopilot features on compatible Model S and Model X cars, although Tesla is currently charging $5,000 for what is currently a partial autonomous driving technology. What's interesting, though, is outside the bell curve of average in this study, some households said they'd pay upwards of $10,000 for full automation, while other households said they'd not pay at all, suggesting it should be included as standard on all new cars. So what do you think? Would you pay more for self-driving cars or not? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. 
For some time now, BMW has been slowly rolling out its DriveNow car sharing project across key cities around the world, gradually increasing the number of electric vehicles used to make it easy, simple and convenient to borrow a high-end electric car for whatever errands you need, if you live in a major city that is. And this week it announced an expansion to its DriveNow program by announcing a new fleet of 550 plug-in cars for a Hamburg-based DriveNow program in Germany. Due to come online by 2019, this new fleet of cars will be complemented by a total of 1150 charging points, ensuring during Drive Now customers don't suffer range anxiety or a flat battery pack. And finally, if you've been in the world of electric vehicles for any length of time, you'll know about the T0, a handmade high performance electric sports car originally built by AC Propulsion. Made in extremely limited numbers, the T0 is credited as being the car which helped Tesla gain the necessary venture capital it needed to start work on the Tesla Roadster. Since AC Propulsion loaned the fledgling company a lithium-ion version of the T0 for several months during its early days to entice investors in. Well, sadly, we heard this week that one of the two remaining T0s, which was owned by Gruber Power Services, a company that specializes in Tesla Roadster repair, was destroyed in a fire at the company's workshops, along with several Tesla Roadsters that were at the facility at the same time. The cause of the fire is allegedly one of the Tesla Roadsters there, which was undergoing a proprietary experimental procedure designed to unbrick its lithium-ion battery pack. If you want more information on the story, then the Tesla Motors Club forum is a good place to start, so I've included a link in the show notes for you all to follow. And on that note, it's time for me to tell you that we've reached the end of another episode. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Visit transportevolve.com for more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news, or join in the conversation on Twitter at Transport Evolved. And if you liked what you saw today and you want to help me make more shows like this, please consider making a donation to the Patreon crowdfunding campaign for Transport Evolved. I've left a link in the description below and there's a clickable one at the end of today's video. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next week. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a great weekend and until next time, keep evolving.